Shalom, Yeladim. And now we're up to our seventh parasha. Parashat Vayese. Let's go back and discuss what we were talking about at the end of last week. We know Esab was very, very, very upset. He wanted to hurt Yaakov for taking the Berachot. Yitzhak and Ripka gave Yaakov a special Beracha, and they told him to run. Run as far as you can. Remember Ripka's brother, Laban, the one who was interrupting when the adults were talking? I want you to run to his house. So Yaakov, first things first, he went to Bet Midrash and he learned Torah for so many years. He learned and he learned and he learned. And after so many years of learning Torah, it was time for him to go to Uncle Laban's house. So he starts walking and walking and walking and he reaches the top of a mountain. And he prays, he prays Tefilat Arbit. In the morning we pray Shahrit, Abraham made up Shahrit. In the afternoon, we pray Minha, Yitzhak made up Minha, and at night, we pray Arbit, Yaakov made up Arbit. And then he got tired. So on the top of that mountain, he gathered a whole bunch of rocks, 12 of them, and he put his head down, but the rocks started fighting. Every rock said, I want Yaakov to put his head on me. I want it. No, I want it. And Hashem made a miracle since they were all trying to help the tzaddik. He did something very cool. He made them one big rock. And Yaakov slept on that one big rock. And while he was sleeping, Yaakov had a dream. He saw a ladder. The ladder reached from the floor all the way up to the sky. And he saw stars just as if it was real. And all of a sudden he saw angels. He saw angels going up and angels going down. Angels going up and angels going down. He didn't know what was going on. And then all of a sudden he heard Hashem speak. And Hashem told him, Yaakov, it's me, Hashem. I'm watching over you. I'm taking good care of you. You see all these stars? You One day you're going to come back home and you're going to have so many children just like these stars. So the angels coming down, these are my special angels that are supposed to keep you safe. They're there to protect you. Don't worry. Nothing's going to happen to you. Don't worry about it. I'm going to take good, good care of you. Jacob got up in the morning. He couldn't believe he was in such a holy place. So he built a Mizbeach. He poured oil on the Mizbeach and he prayed to Hashem. By the way, do you know where this place is? Years later, years, years later, so many years later, do you know what happened on this exact place where there, where Yaakov made a little tiny Mizbeach? The Bet HaMikdash. The Bet HaMikdash. That's exactly the spot where Yaakov was sleeping. He was shaking. I, how could I, uh, it was a holy place and I fell asleep. We don't fall asleep in shul. We don't fall asleep. We don't do anything not respectful in shul. Yaakov very, got very, very, very nervous. And he made a promise. If Hashem gives me clothing to wear, bread to eat, and he makes me come back home safely, I'm going to give a special tzedakah. It's called Ma'aser. That means if I have 10 fruits, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one will go to tzedakah. If I have 10 slices, one will go to tzedakah. If I have 10 coins, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one will go to tzedakah. So now Yaakov travels and travels and travels and he gets to the well. You remember the well where Eliezer was at? There was a beautiful well with a rock, but the problem was there was a rock on it. It wasn't like in Eliezer's day when, when his mommy Rivka gave the, well, the camels water. It was a big rock on it and all the sheep couldn't drink water. And Yaakov saw the shepherds there and he told them, shepherds, 
the sheep are so thirsty. Why don't you move the rock? And I said, we can't. It's too heavy. And he said, do you know where my uncle Laban's house is? And they said, sure. These are his sheep. And you see that girl coming over there with the sheep? That's Rahel coming with the sheep. When Yaakov saw her, he got so excited. He picked up that rock. And the sheep were able to drink. Now, Yaakov really, really, really liked Rahel. He wanted to marry Rahel. She brought him home. But before, but before she went to YouTube, she brought him home to meet Laban. She, I want to tell you, she, Rahel was a very, very pretty girl. Yaakov liked her a lot. But the problem is she had a sister named Leah. Leah was also very pretty. But the problem with Leah was she was always crying. Why was she always crying? Because everyone told Leah, you're going to marry Isav, and Rahel's going to marry Yaakov. See, you have two brothers, two sisters. The young one's going to marry the young one. Rahel's going to marry Yaakov, the young one. And Leah is going to marry Isav, and she didn't want to marry Isav. He was not nice. But Yaakov comes to Laban's house. He meets his uncle. He speaks with him. Very, very nice man. And Laban tells him, Yaakov, what are you doing over here? I came to get married. I want to marry Rahel. That's very, very nice, but you have to work. Okay. Yaakov said, I'll work. What do you want me to work? You have to work for seven years for Rahel. So Yaakov worked as a shepherd for seven years. He worked and worked and worked until the wedding came. It was a beautiful wedding. Everyone in town was invited to the wedding. And it was very exciting. And at the wedding, well, we have a special, we have this custom. That means what we do at weddings, we cover the kala's face. We couldn't see the kala's face. So you, you thought that was normal. But the problem was, see, Laban tricked Yaakov. Instead of Yaakov marrying Rahel, he ended up marrying Leah. Rahel kept quiet. She didn't want to embarrass her sister. She didn't want to hurt her sister's feelings. So she kept quiet. She kept quiet. And Yaakov married Leah. In the morning, Yaakov wakes up and he sees, hey, that's Leah. I married Leah. That's not fair. He comes screaming to Laban, that's not fair. And Laban tells him, well, it's not fair either. Where we come from over here, the older sister is supposed to get married first, and then the younger sister. If you want to marry Rahel also, you have to work another seven years. And Yaakov worked another seven years as a shepherd, another seven years, and finally he was able to get married to Rahel. Yaakov had 12 children. Reuben, Shimon, Levi, Yehuda, Yisachar, Zebulun, Dan, Naftali, Gad, Asher, here's Yosef. And next week we're going to learn about Binyamin. And there was a little girl. Her name was Dina. Dina. He ended up having 13 children, 12 boys, one girl. And he, after he worked seven years for the, uh, seven years for Rahel, he worked another six years by Laban's house to make money. He wanted to get cheap. And the rule was if, Yaakov would get if, he, if uh, Yaakov would make a lot of sheep, all the polka dot ones would go to Yaakov, and there was a lot of polka dot ones. So then Laban changed his mind. No, you get the striped one. And there was a lot of striped ones, and then Laban changed his mind again. No, you get the regular ones, and there was a lot of regular ones, and they kept on being changed, and it wasn't being fair anymore. Yaakov couldn't make any money because Laban kept on changing the deal. It's not fair, and he finally said, "That's it. I'm going." back home. He called Rahel. He called the I said, I'm coming back home. And he took his kids. He took everyone and he went back home. All of a sudden, Laban heard that Yaakov ran away. And he came chasing them. Hey, how could you take my kids? How could you go? And Yaakov said, hey, it was not fair. You kept on changing your mind. You kept on changing your mind. You kept on changing your mind. I said that you don't want me anymore. And finally, he gave his wife, he gave his daughters a hug and kiss. He gave the grandchildren a hug and a kiss. And Laban told Yaakov, look, we're going to make a big pile of rocks. You see this big pile of rocks? 
that's going to show that we love each other that we don't that we don't hate each other we want to live in peace no one is going to ever go fight with anyone they said bye to each other and Yaakov came back home to Eretz Israel, and he saw the angels remember the angels he saw in the beginning of the parasha those were the angels could now, the, the angels that were going up were the angels of Israel. The angels that were coming down were the angels of outside of Israel. But now that he was coming back to Eretz Israel, ah, it was time for the angels of Eretz Israel to come back. We'll talk more about those angels next week. Shalom, Yeladim.